Welcome everyone, Quistine here on Serious Gaming with my top 5 dungeon list for heroic dungeons that I expect to be the most difficult when Burning Crusade Classic rolls around, which I expect to be, I know, late summer, early autumn next year because of a number of factors. Burning Crusade certainly has a deserved reputation for difficulty, and combined with the highest number of individual 5 mans ever released with an expansion, especially a launch, in pretty much the entire game's history, it certainly makes for an interesting experience. I am excluding Magister's Terrace from this list because it would be number one, but it's also a dungeon specifically designed for people with good raiding gear, like tier four, tier five, tier six, and only comes out with the Sunwell Plateau at the very end of the expansion. But what makes a heroic dungeon hard, however? It isn't just purely about damage or annoying abilities, since with a good party setup and good gear, those can either be ignored or trivialized, nor is it purely about length. Because you may have a lengthy dungeon, that may not be particularly challenging. Rather, it is a combination of all of these things to a certain degree. And the heroic dungeons on this list certainly are designed in such a way that easily rolling through them while completely ignoring the mechanics, even with decent raiding gear, isn't as easily achievable as in some other places, like with all of the Serpent Shrine dungeons, or with Akanai Crypt Heroic, which certainly can be trivialized. Some honorable mentions on this list have to go with Hellfire Ramparts and Botanica, which certainly can start out as difficult dungeons, in particular final bosses in both Ramparts and Botanica, due to a combination of their abilities, their damage, but fall short due to the way well-geared groups can tackle them. And number five, we start out with Blood Furnace Heroic. Here, like with many other dungeons on this list, it's not really going to be about the bosses themselves, but rather the trash. It's a long dungeon with plenty of it. Melee trash with ridiculously high damage, invisible rogues waiting to strike at you from the shadows, ranged trash with annoying spells, and the best part of all of it, that make this dungeon on this list, that put this dungeon on this list, engineers with their fanciful bombs that not only hit people with plenty of AoE, but also silence them. Due to their design, it can be tricky to just steamroll through everything, even with a well-geared group. And early on in particular with the Burn Crusade, it's quite possible for a group to fail this particular dungeon, being unable to progress the second boss event. Not the boss itself, which is a joke, but rather the waves of mobs coming at you before he spawns, that you pretty much have to guide if your tank is under geared, because otherwise you're just going to spend a significant amount of mana, you're going to be womb when the boss comes out, you're not going to be able to deal with the boss. It's also worth noting that Blood Furnace is not quite a very popular dungeon, so finding decent groups in the first place can be a challenge in of itself, and it, this is certainly something that does have to be factored in. Moving on at number four, we have Old Hiltzbrand Foothills, the escape from Durnhold Heroic. In contrast to the other Caverns of Time Heroic and Burn Crusade Black Morass, which isn't a hard dungeon but rather annoying, Heroic, Durnhold is easily one of the hardest and even the most frustrating dungeon to deal with in the game. Like with other dungeons, it's really the trash. The bosses aren't a complete cakewalk, as all of them can do quite a decent amount of damage on your tank and can wipe you out very easily if the tank dies, but it's really the trash that puts this place on the list. For every boss, you have to deal with packs of three or four mobs, and each of these packs containing certain mobs that can do high damage. And for the first two bosses and their trash, you're also dealing with mobs that can and will crowd control you, especially your tank. Either the riflemen with their scatter shots, the wardens with their AoE fears, and finally the mages who can polymorph. Having someone to dispel magic effects is a boon here, as is having a shaman for Tremor Totem. Without them, you'll have a far more difficult time. What makes it especially annoying is the second boss gauntlet. Here you have to escort Thrall out of the fortress, while dealing with pack, four packs of mobs with very little time for breaks and then having a boss spawn at the end of all of it. It's by far and away the hardest part of the dungeon, and if you can manage it, you can manage the entire thing, but it, the remainder isn't exactly a cakewalk, however. And number three, Architraz, heroic. A dungeon that by some people's reckoning I'm sure should rank higher, perhaps even number one. But to be fair, the bosses here bar the first one, which you might not really care about, since he doesn't drop any uh, special hero gear, the bosses here aren't hard to deal with. It's really the trash again. 
And here you're dealing with at first flesh beasts that love to put an injection on a random person that spawns a bunch of ads that can and will kill your healer if he or the casters or the tank aren't paying attention. Then there's a room filled with hellhounds and demonic eyeballs, after which you start dealing with broken arcane constructs for the rest of the dungeon that do a lot of damage to the person closest to them and also have this lovely tendency of dropping fret while being taunt immune, having a good amount of HP and also exploding potentially when they get to low HP if you don't kill them quickly enough. So pretty annoying trash to deal with, difficult trash to deal with. Eventually, though, you come up against what is arguably the single worst room of trash in the entire game. This is counting raids as well. The Felguards and Succubus here are each quite capable of destroying your party with ease. And pulling more than one mob, even on normal, in this room early on is almost certainly a wipe. The gameplay footage that I ha have here for this particular dungeon is on normal difficulty, so it's not quite the same extreme levels of damage you would have on Heroic, but on Heroic the combination of AoE silence, disarm, gouge, and AoE damage from these mobs make them each a nightmare to tackle, let alone if you miss pull because some of them are invisible, and that makes it uh, difficult to deal with. The best question actually with Architrass Heroic is not why it's hard, but rather why it's not uh, listed higher on this list. In this I argue that although certainly difficult, frustrating and requiring pretty much a warlock to deal with that room because you want detect invisibility or a hunter to help you deal with the patrols because there are patrols, um, it's not a dungeon that you may fail easily. You may wipe a dozen times, you may spend an hour alone on the Felgard Succubus room, but it would take an exceptional amount of fail to be unable to clear Architrass Heroic. Even the Trial of the Naru, which is arguably the most difficult thing here, where you have to do the entire final boss event without wiping because you then failed the quest, even that doesn't factor in that much, since you can always have someone else clear it in a good group and then you can take their ID to talk with the NPC at the end and complete the quest and ignore the entire challenge. This brings me, however, to a dungeon where you can't ignore the challenge. Shattered Hall's Heroic, number two. Here, as with most of these dungeons, it's not really the bosses, though the Ogre boss and Kargov Blade Fist are certainly not the joke to tackle, but rather it's the trash. And what trash do we have in Shattered Halls? Mobs that summon reinforcements and rage if you don't kill them first, casters doing shadow bolts and rain of fire, healers that heal for quite a bit, melee mobs doing almost 360 cleaves if it's early blizz like values and tuning, and doing more damage on tanks than many actual raid bosses in Karazhan or bosses in the game, including even some tier 5 bosses, let alone tier 5 trash. Oh, and remember how I said Dernhold was part and part because of the CC that the trash uses, speci specifically the tanks getting scattershotted? Yeah, you get that too here. And all that I just described is simply to reach the first boss in this hellhole. A boss that you have to deal with in order to be able to summon Nightbane, the true a final boss of Karazhan. After dealing with that, it's not over because you then get a lovely timer giving you almost an hour to do Trial of the Naro Mercy, which you have to do as part of the uh, Tempest Keep attunement chain. So everyone has to do this. Yes, you can potentially do it quickly enough and people join in for the final mob that is actually the quest mob, but for the most part, most people that are going to be attuned for Tempest Keep are going to have to do this themselves. And this is frustrating because right after you kill the first boss, you get the gauntlet that can be tricky. Then you get uh, another corridor of mobs that can be pretty annoying with some pretty large packs and then the gladiators on the side that do a lot of damage. You may be able to skip them or not depending on the pull ranges, but these gladiators can be quite uh, a nightmare to tackle. And then you have rogues and the sentries uh, that, or the champions that are guarding Kargov and the ogre boss. And after all of that, you have to deal with a named mob at the end who is actually the quest mob for the Trials of Denaru. Shattered Holes is such a difficult dungeon, especially the timed run, that 
On retail, for those that have never played it, on retail, this was one of the most difficult things to do for guilds that wanted to enter Tempest Keep. It's, it was quite challenging for guilds, raiding guilds, proper raiding guilds early on in the Burn Crusade to get people attuned through this. Let alone the fact that people to get attuned to Tempest Keep, you have to kill McFarland and all that. To even get to that point was an absolute nightmare. And it was really because of this dungeon. Think of this fact. You have 15 minutes or so to do the time run, to get the quest done, right? 15 minutes sounds a lot, right? Especially for those of you that have been playing on Classic. But what you need to understand is that the way the damage was on retail, the way people played, uh, the way the tuning was on retail early on, made it so that if you screwed up, if you wiped once, you're likely to fail. Uh, and even if you didn't wipe once, if you weren't fast enough, you're likely to fail. Yes, a dungeon that has some of the most difficult trash that can take easily half an hour to reach the first boss, then has 15 minutes, is something that you can't fail because you, aren't fa you weren't fast enough on retail. The best part of all of this is you may have cleared all the difficult packs, all the difficult trash, and then you'd get to the ogre boss, and then you'd wipe on him because of his RNG friend mechanic, so he would... Uh, the tank would lose fret, he'd go on the healer, the healer would die, the party would wipe. Or DPS orders would die one by one because of the frame mechanics, and then you would fail the challenge, and the whole effort would have been for nothing. Now, maybe people have, you know, different memories about Shant how Shattered Holds was, or people who have only played it on private servers have different views on this, but for anyone that's ever played it on retail early on, I think it's fairly easy to say that Shattered Hall's Heroic certainly earns its spot on this list. Hell, some people would even rank it higher, but here I do have a bit of a different opinion. Because number one is without a doubt in my mind, Mana Tomb's Heroic. And what is there to say about Mana Tomb's Heroic? So far I've covered dungeons that have had difficult trash. But one of the important things to understand about virtually all other dungeons that exist in the game is that the challenge comes in parts of dungeons, right? There are some challenging mobs and some not so challenging mobs. In Mana Tombs, you have entire rooms from beginning to end, and they get progressively more difficult. So yes, it's the trash. It's the trash pack, large trash packs. Trash packs with AoE, mobs losing fret and charging, or mobs that just charge, mobs that gouge, mobs that blast wave, do a lot of AoE, mobs that heal, mobs that summon adds, adds that at first, the initial ones that you're dealing with just do an AoE in melee. So yeah, melee DPS gets screwed, but that's pretty much the part of the core uh, for Burning Crusade, but then later on, you get mobs that summon adds that do arcane volleys, and you can have more than one. So you might have a mob, he summons two adds, you get two of them, you get four adds, your group is wiping, and quickly, swiftly, mercilessly. That is Mana Tombs in a nutshell. It's one trash pack after another where it's so very easy to wipe. The best part about Mana Tombs is the fact that every in every single room, it's chock full of trash packs. Many of them you can't skip, so you have to do a lot of trash. It's a long dungeon. It doesn't have that many bosses, nor does it have that great loot. So actually getting decent groups may be difficult. Like things like Shatter Holes, people have to do, right? Or things like Architrast, people may want to do. Um, Though it can be difficult finding a group. Or Durnhold. Like, there's reasons to do Durnhold or Shadow Holes or Architrass. There's not so many reasons with Mana Tombs unless you're a warrior tank. Who Warrior tanks absolutely want to do Mana Tombs. They have a couple of best-in-slot items. Pre-rate best items or even best items. Like a ring, for instance, which is really damn good and very hard to replace. So there's reasons for some people to do Mana Tombs, but not for everyone. And that is a problem. Couple that with some of the most difficult trash in the game, couple that with the length. And the final part, the best part, so far, the bosses in these dungeons haven't been anything exceptional. This changes with Mana Tombs. The first boss, he does a lot of damage. He has a Reflect that 
if either melee physical DPS casters hit him when he has it on, they'll get themselves killed very quickly. And this applies to tanks. So not only is the tank getting hit for a lot of damage, he might also be killing himself doing that. Then the second boss, he's got the stun. The problem with the stun on the tank, well, a tank can't dodge, parry, or miss an attack. So he's going to take a lot of damage. The boss hits hard. The boss is difficult to kill. The boss is annoying. And then the final boss, you got to deal with ads, with CC, with the caster boss that constantly moves around, crowd controls the tank, freezes them in place. You have to run around like a hellish chicken after this guy. So Manatums has difficult bosses, difficult trash, high damage mobs, high damage ads, annoying abilities to deal with. And it's a very fucking long dungeon. That it's the entire package when Manatums. Now, let me be clear on something here. With good groups from established guilds that know what they're doing, that know what they're signing up for with decent gear, would they clear these dungeons with relative ease? Yes. But would pugs clear these dungeons with relative ease? No, absolutely not. Would pugs be able to do some of these dungeons? Yes. But when it comes to things like shatter holes or mana tombs, you absolutely want to have a guild group. Because without the guild group, if you're just going in with a completely random pug, and they're not from, you know, top guilds, from they're not good raiders, they're not good players in general, you're going to have an absolute nightmare of a time. So it's also practical difficulty. It's not just like, oh yeah, my guild has this organized group and we're capable of smashing through these dungeons. Now look, final note, absolute final note. Blizzard, it depends a lot on how Blizzard tunes this, but regardless of how Blizzard tunes the damage, the abilities will largely remain the same. There is very little chance that something like Manatoons would become a cakewalk. Very little chance something like Shattered Tolls become a cake. Uh, Shattered Tolls Heroic becomes a cakewalk just because of the way the abilities work. Hell, the threat reset on the Ogre Boss is a nightmarish thing to deal with in the, in the first place. Then you have then you have things like Scatter Shot and Durnhold. Uh, you do have. You, you do have the fell guards with Airy, we silence, disarm, and uh, yeah, Architrans. So it's it's the entire pack. It's not just pure damage. Pure damage, yeah, there are some mobs that do a lot of damage, like in Shadow Labyrinth Normal, but it has to be the entire package. And this is what these dungeons deliver. Questine here on Serious Gaming signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.